Welcome to the Writer's Edge Podcast, a platform to share conversations about the health and wellness of horse and rider. I'm your host, Farley Schweigert. Hey y'all, this is Farley with the Writer's Edge Podcast, and today I get to have a conversation with Breland Cowan. Welcome, Breland. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to have a conversation today and kind of a tradition here on Writer's Edge. Uh, I very much feel like everybody is their own best author of their story. So kind of um, give us uh, the Breland story um, as we get started talking here today. Sure. Um, I am from South Dakota and I grew up on a horse and cattle ranch and kind of my uh, a fun deal is my dad owned the horse Sun Frost, and he's probably he's probably our biggest claim to fame that we've had. So um, that's been pretty cool. And so um, what I do is I start colts uh, for the most part. I start all of our two year olds and um, help with other aspects. But my, my main thing, my main job here is uh, starting two year olds, and so I, I really enjoy that. Not everybody does, so that that is yeah. <laughs> that is a, a unique thing. So kudos to you. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of, it's, it's one of those things, like, I saw a meme on Facebook where it, it says, today was an awesome day, and then the next thing is, like, I have no idea what I'm doing, and then you're back to, okay, it's okay, it's like, this is miserable, so it's up and down, but overall, I do love it, it, it is a lot of fun. <laughs> well, today, uh, I wanted to really have kind of one of those, in the arena, 365 conversations, um, kind of a new thing I'm starting here on the podcast of just talking to people and about their experiences when they've gone through something and how they've made it through that. And um, you made a post on Facebook the other day talking about, you know, getting confidence back after having um, either an injury or a horse wreck either way. And, you know, how, how taking that journey back. And I thought, gosh, that would be a great thing because a lot of people are going to be able to relate to that. I, I related to that. And, and I, I don't, I don't ride two year olds like you do. I, I had a, I had an injury on a three year old, but I, I, I kind of stay in that the middle range to the end on my career. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, um, that's what the, I, I got into some pretty good, but there, I mean, it's typical two-year-old stuff where I wouldn't say there was anything that was like, I never knock on wood. I have never broken any bones. Thank goodness. Um, I just had a few things, but yeah, you, like I've listened to Fallon Taylor's story and hear what she went through. And you're just like, you know, those, I had enough trouble getting back on after my thing. I do. I, it was a big struggle. And so it's like to listen to people who have been through like horrific wrecks and get back. I had to do it for a living. And that's what that post I said, if I, or maybe I didn't mention that was like, if I didn't have to do it for a living, I'm not sure I ever could have stepped back on one. Cause it, it, it scared. It's like the whole, it, and it's not even like the, the experience itself is traumatic, but it's just like even getting the anxiety that you develop. It, it It's a huge journey. And that's why I have a lot of respect for people that have had, you know, worse wrecks than I have that have made a big comeback because it's, it's, it's definitely a process and you, it doesn't just happen. So yeah, it's, it's quite the deal. Yeah. I, I, um, I had a, just a, it wasn't even a major one, but I was riding a colt for my dad and I was getting on her and the next, I wasn't even, didn't get my other foot in the stirrup and I was on my back <laughs> and, oh, no. and my hip turned black of course <laughs> and of course. I you know I've found myself working through that even with my young colts that I know can't buck or yes. you know, can't you know I just it, it's it's almost that what if it, yes <laughs> just, you, just like you said it wasn't even the whole traumatic of that it's a the what if that keeps going and then I find my for a long time I was changing how I was reacting to their situations just because of that anxiety and that panic when yes. it, it's not like Fallon Taylor's story or, you know, anybody else that you, you hear about that really came back from a, a traumatic injury, but just kind of, I don't know, kind of talk about um, how you've worked through coming, coming back from something like that. Cause um, you're, you're in the round pin every, <laughs> every day. 
Yeah. Well, we laugh about when, and of course, when you're first getting started, or when I was like, we, uh, I, think I actually talked to Hey Chicks. They, I work with those guys and I did a podcast for them. And we talked about when I used to have to, it was all guys that were outside and I was just dying. I hated housework. I wanted so bad to be out riding with those guys all the time. And so I was like, I remember I made a bridle out of my dogs, like those, uh, those chains that you put around a dog's net, like a dog collar, that's a chain dog collar. And I made a bridle out of that in twine and I stuck it on this horse that just be ha- I, like I didn't know what he was, but he was standing there. So I just stuck and I jumped on it. And so I was like, you go from fearless, naive to like, oh my God, you know what can happen. Right. But, um, so I went, I mean, I did, I like, I had no fear when I first, like for the first long time. And, and, uh, I laughed about that. I, I don't wish I had that back because I feel like you just don't, you just don't realize you're, you might be a little dumb at that point. But, uh, but yeah, I had a, I was riding a two year old and we live in the river breaks. It's beautiful, beautiful country. And I love riding Colts down here. Um, and I had a deer popped up and we were going up a super steep hill and it scared this mare and she was pretty small and she took off. And, um, I've been bucked off a few times before this, that kind of started the process, but this kind of just nailed it. And she ran off with me and, uh, we went through cricks. We ended up going across a bridge and I thought we got to a gate and she was just running scared and I couldn't pick her up because I thought if I picked her up, I'd pull her feet out from underneath her because she was so small. And so it was just like, it just like the anxiety was just like through the roof. And I thought like she was going to hit it. I like put her towards a pen. I was like, I don't want to go through a fence. So I found a gate and got her there and I thought that she was gonna like just get there and we'd stop and she tried to jump it and so it was just like the whole thing and it took forever it seemed like normally when that stuff happens it seems like okay like 15 seconds and we're done but it seemed like that took forever but that was just like I had other stuff happen that made me a little bit nervous but that and I don't know that might have just been the straw that broke the camel's back on the deal but I uh did not get back on her <laughs> but um even going back to the house, like to get on my other colts, like I took some time off because I got kind of bruised up a little bit. And uh, I stepped on, my dad has a horse that the, the, he'd let anybody, I mean, he is the most bomb proof horse ever. And I remember when I first stepped on him to take him up to the arena, I, I've i never had anxiety attack. That stuff had never hit my brain. I, I didn't even know what that was. And I stepped on this horse that I could not breathe. And I've been, I mean, I rodeoed all through high school. I mean, I've really been starting colts forever. And it was, I was just like, I couldn't believe it. And I had to step off and I was shaking so bad. And it was on this horse that I knew was, and it was just, that's what I do. I, and I, just from that experience, it is, it takes so much to get back from something like that. And like I said, like that, I didn't really get hurt, but it was just like, I think it was just the, I mean, it, it was, I won't say it was a bad wreck. I'm sure there's people who've been in way worse wrecks than that, but it did. It like mentally, it, uh, it was hard to come back from that. Well, and, you know, and we said, well, it wasn't a bad wreck, but it, you know, it, it's what wrecked your program, you know, like, you know, we can't, I tell my buddies and I get into this all the time. I'm like, we can't compare. Oh, well, that wasn't that bad. Yeah, it was, you know, um, I, you know, I have, um, dental anxiety. And so that was, (laughs) (laughs) that's what was going on today. And, um, but it's, it's weird when you, you know, people like us that work hard and just salt of the earth and and work with horses all the time, we don't think about anxiety and different things happening until it just kind of hits you like a ton of bricks. And it, you know, it can do some strange physical manifestations and and changes. So, you know, kind of how did you work through that anxiety? Sure. And it, um, it, I got to think back to this and this is probably actually this has been the first year in a long time that I've felt like as good as I've felt in a long time. So I don't mean to discourage people and I'm sure my story is different from others, but man, it took me a long time because, but you're riding, I'm riding two year olds. So it isn't like, you know, your, your degree of what's going to happen is still there. Every, I didn't have the choice to get back on full faithful all the time. And so I, some things that I noticed that really like, and, and then it, it's hard on two year olds because they read you so much. Right. And so it just made the situation. And that's probably what took me so long is that those Colts read me. And so it just made everything so much tighter all the time. And so I, and like I said, I didn't really realize, like it didn't really register me. Like I was having like anxiety, like that was, you know, that response was called anxiety. I just did not know that. 
And I just thought, like, you know, everybody's calling me a weenie and stuff. And like I said, like, I've been doing so good and like this hat. So everybody's just like, oh, you're fine. But it was it's just like you get to where you can't breathe and then you sit on those colts like that and they get to feeling like that. And so, you know, they react. So a lot. I had a year where my colts did not ride good at all. And it was just, you know, I, it, I didn't really register how much they fed off of that. And so I started doing um, some, once I kind of realized that that was the deal, um, I started, I started really emphasizing my groundwork and getting to where I was super, super confident in those colts before I ever stepped on them. Because I laughed, like before we put one ride on them and I'd get them to where we could stir them left and right. And then we'd go out in the, I mean, we'd go out the river breaks and like, and it was fun. And most of the time, like I won't, like we have a good program and those horses are truly, they truly like God, blood, like thank God, like for starting colts for 10 years and never breaking a bone. Like I've been blessed with some super nice horses that, you know, they take pretty good care of you. But um, yeah, it, uh, it was quite the deal, but, um, some, I had to research on how to deal with anxiety. And, and the first person I talked to, um, you know, they recommended that I got on some kind of medication and I wasn't quite ready to go that route yet. It wasn't quite to that. You know, I thought I'm just like on the edge of being okay. Um, and then kind of in the middle of that, I realized I had some physical issues. I realized that like I had, I wasn't sure if it was just from like getting in you know, I had been, I had one wreck or a horse I hit pretty hard. And they said, the only way you would have got this injury is a car wreck. I was like, well, I mean, a horse bucks me off. I'm like, oh yeah, or that. <laughs> so it's like, okay, well that makes sense too. But so I, I actually had some issues in my hips to where I wasn't sitting square. Like my, my pelvis had rotated. And so that was, you know, it was, I had to deal with the mental and then the physical part of it. And so once I kind of got the mental part back, I was still struggling and so that's when I reached out. I actually, I went to chiropractors and stuff and all over everywhere seemed like, and I found an osteopath in Dallas this last year. And she was like, that's what we laughed. Cause like what she did to me, I was like, no way, no way did this fix anything. I mean, it feels like voodoo. Like she grabbed your wrist and just twist it. She's like, Oh, that shit. What it was. I will, I'll preach on osteopath real quick because it was, it was crazy. Cause she, I had, I'm sure it was from like hitting the ground, like for, you know, starting Colts forever. And, um, my wrist had always, and I have younger brothers that always try to wrestle me. Right. And so they'll grab my wrist and they could drop me to my knees, just grab my wrist. And so, and I didn't really think much of it because they're like, they're six, three, two fifty, they're big boys. So I really, I was like, okay, yeah, they could probably do that regardless. But she was working on me and she grabbed my wrist and it didn't really hurt. And she's like, do your wrist bother you? I was like, well, I mean this and like, and she adjusted it. And it was the weirdest thing. I mean, you, you honestly, if you get, if you like the, the lady that I worked with, like, like I said, I've never dreamed what she did was going to help me. It was kind of my last ditch effort. Cause I've been, you know, I've been to the chiropractor and they had just me back. I'd done so many, like working out all these different things. And finally I went and saw her two or three times and she's probably, you know, she probably helped me the most, but I was like, you know, and that was, that was a big thing. It's like, I struggled with it, but if your hips are off, that throws everything off. And so it just made, it was just a one problem compiled on another. And uh, so I had to work through the first part thinking that would fix everything and it didn't. So then I had to go to the, the second part. And actually the way I found that out is like, I was complaining to a friend that I thought I said, well, I have one leg that's way longer than the other. She's like, no, you don't. She's like, let me work on you. And so this physical therapist actually started and she did it and she fixed me right off the bat. And I was like, wow. So I've been, I mean, probably four or five years walking around with my pelvis all out of whack. And so that, yeah, that definitely, that definitely paid, played a big role in helping me get back mentally, being able to sit square again. So I'd say if anybody struggled with that, dang sure have them physically check you because you might have had, you know, something get way out of whack that's causing you more problems than you didn't realize. Yeah, absolutely. Our, you know, our pelvis is our foundation in writing. And, it, and yes. it's so, it's so important, um, for our health and for our horse's health, because yes. if you are, if you are out of, if you are not correctly sitting on the horse then they have to shift their, their weight and how they travel to accommodate you. And, you know, particularly mm -hmm. in, in what you do, uh, starting horses, they're getting used to having somebody on their back and then they're having to, to compensate over, um, even, even more. Cause it, you know, that's such right. a, a confusing time of <laughs> now I've got to carry a big backpack on my back. <laughs> yes. Yes. And that's, and I, I really didn't realize how big of a, how 
how big that was. Cause yeah, I had a few issues with my horses and, um, I talked to uh, a couple ladies and that's what they said that and that's actually how I got onto this Aussie pass. I had a friend tell me that she had her horses worked on by one. And it's a lady that's out of Oklahoma city that did uh, Dr. Rasmussen, I believe was her name. And she was, so she's an equine osteopath. Yes. And she did a great, do you know her? Yeah. I lived in Oklahoma city for eight years. She was my best. Oh my yeah. I, I love Kim. Kim's awesome. Yes. Yeah. So we can talk oh about osteopaths God. or horses and people all day. I, yeah. Oh shoot. See, look at I just, so did you, so that was funny. I didn't, so Holly Edbauer is actually who got me. We're friends with Holly because they bought us, well, Billy and my dad have been friends forever, whatever, but they have a son for us, and that's where they got him because we were, you know, I've, I've bounced some ideas off of Holly here and there, and uh, she was telling me that they really didn't have to do injections and stuff. Actually, she's telling this to my mom, but because um, they did this osteopath stuff, and uh, Randy Lindsay, did you ever get to meet Randy? No, I didn't. Mm-mm. Okay. So Randy was a good friend of a friend of ours and he actually came to South Dakota a couple of times. So that's how, so I was like, we're, I was talking to Kim and I really didn't realize that he was an osteopath. And so I was saying, I was like, yeah, there's a guy that came to South Dakota and did some stuff. And I was like, oh yeah, his name was Randy Lindsay. And Kim's like, you have to be kidding me. And so they went to school together someplace and she just loved Randy. And he passed away. For, I believe he had a heart attack um, quite a few years ago now, but he was just, he was so cool. But anyways, yeah, that's what, that's how I got on Ozzy. Cause they said, I talked to her. She's like, you probably need to go see an osteopath cause you're probably causing a lot of these issues. And I was like, yeah. So, so ever since then that, yeah, it's made a huge difference on, on everything. So yeah, I would definitely say there's a mental and a, you know, you can't fix your mental if you're physically still struggling. And so that's what, that's probably what took me so long to get things squared around. Cause I really didn't, I didn't, I guess I didn't, uh, I had trouble sitting square, but I thought it was because of my anxiety and that I was so tight that I just couldn't ride the same anymore. And so that's what I thought. Like I finally decided, well, I need to go get some help and see, see what my options are. And so, yeah, that's so funny. Yeah. I love Kim. She was a lot of fun. <laughs> small world, small world. This is a small world. I haven't, she's so busy. I haven't gotten her on here yet, but um, we, we, we're, oh, getting, we're, we're getting there. Yeah, we're playing the, <laughs> yeah her and I hate that I can't remember her assistant's name but I'd actually so this was funny and I don't we'll have to ask her about this but uh I actually had just broke up with my boyfriend like the day before and I was supposed to go stay because I was in Stephenville Texas so I walked in there and my eyes are probably all red from crying so I was still so mad at him and so yeah, me and Kim just got we all got super close super fast so yeah that was fun I like her that was yeah. a lot of fun yeah she's great yeah and that's that's the cool thing about that. Um, cause I know Billy and Holly's program works like that. And when I lived out there, my, my crew, we didn't, we didn't inject because we, I, because we went and saw her and we adjusted so much until, right. we, until we had to, you know, but I mean, right. yep. Yep. Yeah. Like I have, I have nothing against injections, but yeah, it just seemed like that was a, it just made such a tremendous difference on, I took her eight horses. <laughs> so, and I really didn't realize like how like, um, physically demanding of course she's so small you know bless her heart and my horses were all huge and I was like oh so I felt bad I was like because I had I told her I was bringing so many I was like man I'm driving five hours so I'm gonna throw two more on and see if I could sneak them in and I shouldn't have done that to her but she did them and she yeah they got home and and they were all completely different horses so I would totally totally recommend that to uh to anybody that was that was good stuff it was worth a five-hour drive I'll tell you that yes Yes, people, <laughs> people don't realize that, um, especially people down in central Oklahoma, North Texas, or get real spoiled about not having to drive very far to a vet, but it's, oh, it's, yes. it's worth, it's worth it. Um, when, yes. you, when you get the right one, if, if you've got to go, go drive a little bit. <laughs> yep, I a hundred percent agree. Yep. <laughs> um, so you work through the mental part, you work through the physical part. Um, and you were able to not go down the medication route, which there's nothing wrong for people who are listening that, that have to do that, you know, getting with the right. provider, um, yep. to, to work through that is a, a perfectly good way. But, um, for some of us hard headed people <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, that ride right. horses and, and don't, uh, <laughs> refuse some of those things that would probably make our lives easier in some aspects. Yeah, that's what I thought that. I was like, man, that sounds good if you could just do that. But I thought, I thought, I, I mean, I was to the point where I was going to have to make a decision. I was like, you know, I'm going to put as much effort 
and to try to do it without them. And then if I can't get there, then I, and like I said, like, I was totally open to it. But I was like, let's try, you know, everything I can first. And then if I can't get this conquered, then I was very open to that. But luckily I didn't have to go that route. So, but. So kind of, um, if you can walk us through a little bit more of going through that route as far as, um, you know, how you worked through that and, and what you learned in that process mentally of kind of the mental aspect of, of returning to that. Sure. Uh, so, um, like I said, like I had to go back and uh, it was actually good for my program too. So like a lot of my Colts, like I had, a uh, I I ride quite a few of them. I used to ride quite a few of them and, uh, you're kind of in a hurry all the time just to get through them. But, um, I really spent a lot of time doing a lot of groundwork and making sure those horses were super comfortable. Um, I realized I had to check my emotions at the door. If I came in and I felt a certain way, you know, if I got worked up, then I needed to take a step back, you know, take a few deep breaths, chill back out. Or if I got, if I stepped on one and I could feel myself tense up, I would step off, take a few deep breaths, do the groundwork that I needed to do and get back on. Um, but yeah, like I said, like, and that's why I do, if I didn't have to, if my livelihood didn't depend on me riding horses, it, that would be a struggle. Like, you know, and so, like I said, like I have all the respect and role for people that, you know, that don't do it for a living and go through something like that and have to work through that. And that's, I was lucky because I was having to step on, you know, 10, 15 horses a day. And, um, and so you, you all, you almost had to forcibly get through that. Um, but yeah, I, it, that is quite the deal. I love, it is, it's, it's a journey. And I do, like I said, that's, I have a lot of respect, but, uh, yeah, part of the deal was just realizing that you do have to take a step back. You have to get a control, like breathing work. Like I tell people that, you know, like we're from Cowboys, South Dakota. And they said, you know, you got to do breath work for you get on your horses. They're like, you're an idiot. But I'm telling you, it's like, man, you got to do what you got to do, you know? And so I did that. And, um, I actually, I swapped saddles and that helped me quite a bit. Um, I had a guy custom build me a saddle that really helped me sit down. Um, the saddles that I had were kind of, they were, they were okay, but, um, I actually rode a, a Robbie. So my, I, my dad had bought me these saddles and I actually started Colts in the same saddle that he started Colts in and they're really flat seated. And so I was used to riding the saddles like that my whole life. And then I, I had put some money together and bought a Robbie Phillips barrel saddle. And I was like, when I sat in that, I was like, you got to be kidding me. I was like, I didn't even know saddles came like this. I was like, why have I been riding these other ones my whole life? And so we luckily had a guy, Mike Polarzi lives right up the road from us. And he used to build saddles in Texas and he's back up here. And um, I told him kind of what I wanted and what I needed. And, um, and I just needed a deeper seat and my Colt starting saddle and ha a saddle can make or break you. I think after riding in both, like, if you have issues, you need one that will help set you down to where you don't have to, like I was having to even like turn them into the fence, like sitting down. Like I had, I used to, and, and it was so hard. And that's what it says. Like if you're used to riding and then you, that anxiety hits you, it's such a, I mean, it's huge mental block. It's a huge physical block. And so like once I had to focus on my body the whole time of being, okay, you have to relax you have to sit down, you have to get your hips right, you gotta, you know, do this and that, and uh, I couldn't, like, do a rollback in the fence without holding on to my horn, because I could not, and that's what I thought, it was so frustrating, because I thought, well, this is my mental side, and then it was, it was just the two paired together, it's just so lethal to your confidence, I think, and so getting those spread around, but yeah, definitely getting a saddle that, that worked better for me, that I didn't have to focus so hard on sitting in the middle of one like it really sat me down and helped me stay um stay where I needed to be but yeah he had me sit in it and uh and made it to where it, it darn sure fit me and so that that made a pretty big difference I would say that and so between you know just getting your mind right like that sounds funny but um and anytime I felt anxious or anything I worked you know I looked up some some videos on on extra groundwork I used to not I used to hate groundwork now I'm like the groundwork queen well groundwork for a week at a time and I got no problem with that but um yeah it it and I think there's just a, a a lot of different routes for a lot of different people but um I did get to see uh, I always get them mixed up but uh not Clinton Anderson Chris Cox I saw him in Arizona when I was in there and he had a lady that had gotten to a bad wreck she'd had kids and she's so bad want to get back on a horse and um he put her on one and 
she went to go lope and she had an absolute meltdown. And I was like, Lily, it almost made me tear up. So I was like, honey, I have been in your shoes. And this was a super nice horse. You knew he wasn't going to do anything. And uh, Chris like pushed her through it. And um, I think you also have to have people there that will help you through it a little bit. Like I had my dad, um, you know, when I got nervous and stuff, he sat there and he told, you know, like, you're fine. Like, just take a deep breath and you're okay. But it, I wish that somebody would have got that on video because it was like this lady in, in a very short order made tons of, uh, made huge strides. And it's just like breaking that. Because I remember like trying to break a colt into a lope. I was like, it like absolutely terrified me forever. And I was like, you can't be a cult star and be terrified on, in breaking your colts into a lope. And so it was, it was a lot of mental stuff. And then, and then one thing I found that really helped me out that was weird. And then I look back that helped me is that I had a kid come and ride with me and just watching him ride and seeing, okay, he's okay. Nothing happened. And I ride by myself quite a bit. And so that might've been, but it's like just having him there and seeing like, okay, he did that and he was fine. And it, it is, it's like you, and I think that's funny. It's not funny. That's not the right word, but you, uh, you've been there your whole life. And then just to like, see, just say, like, if you would have told me like, yeah, you just got to watch somebody else ride. That's going to help you. I was like, no, nah, that's not going to do anything for me. And really just watching him be like, okay, he did that. And he's okay. Like you, and I've, I've tried to do a lot of research on like how your brain works. And there's a lot of really funky stuff that your brain does. And so that was one thing. It's like, okay, you're like, your brain is just processing like, okay, he's okay. You're going to be okay. And it's kind of taken away those like, you know, it just gives you confidence. And that was one thing that was kind of different that kind of helped me surprisingly. But, um, yeah, I would say, I would say riding with people that that'll help you uh, breath work. I don't I think it's, it's, it's not fun, but it's, it's like, you come from cowboy country and everybody just comes, you know, get on yeehaw. And sometimes that doesn't work. So you have to, you have to take extra steps, but, um, yeah, I would definitely say those few things, uh, helped me out tremendously. A good saddle, having somebody there to help you watching somebody that it goes well and, uh, just, just uh figuring out how to control your anxiety when it comes um definitely helped me out a lot oh sure and i think those are that i mean that's great and that's why i was so excited to have you tell your story tonight and it's interesting because i don't go um saddle saddle fit saddles are a high topic of conversation <laughs> for mm -hmm. me right now with a lot of people and uh are they? and so you know because um, right now we're, we've been focused a lot about, you know, them fitting the horse, but I tell people too, they've got to fit you as well. And so, you know, this is a perfect example. Um, yes. you didn't know what you didn't know. Cause you always, you know, we, <laughs> when you grow up in cowboy culture, you do what your dad tells you. Cause that's, yes, ma yes you do. <laughs> <laughs> by golly, that's how it is. <laughs> yep. And, yep. um, you know, and then light bulbs go off about, you know, when you get to a different saddle or something and, and something, something that simple, I mean, it's kind of like just getting the Colt's feet moving. Yep. You know, it's just something simple that just changed the dynamic and the direction and you were able to, to, to progress more through that. Yeah. And I, I just think I like, we had a, I had a lady come out and she we had a clinic and man, I'm, I'm embarrassed. I can't remember what her name was, but this was a few years ago. Um, but she had had a clinic and, uh, she was a physical therapist. And so she went through all of us and she videoed us riding, um, and did all that stuff. And so that made a huge difference. But there was a lady at that clinic too, that she was super convinced it was physical with her. And I kind of watched her ride and then I talked to her and she'd asked me if we could stay after the clinic, if I could ride with her. I was like, yeah. And it was one of those things where I, I literally had to sit there and just, I mean, I didn't yell at her, but I was like, you are fine. Like, let that horse go. Like, you are fine. To where, you know, that, that definitely having somebody, somebody help push you through that too and make you realize like, okay, I'm the one that's messing this up. It is in my mind. Um, you know, that I, didn't, I, that was definitely helpful to her get through her anxiety. Cause she was just so worried about everything. I'm like, take a deep breath and just ride. Like you're overthinking it. And that's, you know, I, I did that too, to where you just sit there and you're just like, Oh my gosh, what's going to happen. It's just like, just take a deep breath and ride, like quit thinking about everything and just, just go. Yeah. Your tribe, your tribe is so important and making sure you have, you have people that know when to push you and when to, <laughs> and when to be quiet, but when yeah. <laughs> well, those, those are very important. <laughs> yes, they are. Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I want to I want to thank you for um, chatting with me today. I just um, I'm so glad we were able to con to connect and um, just kind of have a conversation because I think it's important to just have these kind of conversations that maybe they'll help somebody, you know, down down the road with something that they're dealing with because it's not. Um, it's just it's just in the arena right it's just in the arena in the round pen out in the pasture it's it's real life it's not just you know what we see in the um rodeo arena under the bright lights it, you know yeah. real, real life yeah. happens in the process not in the destination <laughs> yeah i've actually seen a great trend of it seems like there's a lot more trainers that are showing the sides of okay this isn't all like roses and daisies. So I'm, I know I like grew up intimidated with all these trainers that were all perfect and did. And they're like, Oh no, no. So we've got, I follow uh, joy Wargo on Instagram. So she's mm -hmm. great to follow. Cause she shows you the good, bad and the ugly. And like for, you know, and even in that thing, it's like, that's what I was like, you realize you're not the only one that deals with these problems. And they are very, very, it's very, you can get, you can work through it because other people have too. So yeah, I've definitely, I've really, really appreciated other people sharing um, their, their trials and, and how they got through them. Cause I've definitely used them, you know? So yeah, I appreciate you having me on. That was fun. I hope it does. Like, it's like, it is one of those things. Like, it's, I wouldn't even say it's embarrassing, but it's like, you know, when you've rode horses your whole life, and even if you haven't, it's just like, you know, be like, Hey, I got into a wreck and I have a hard time, you know, get it. it I wouldn't call it taboo either, but like, kind of, you know, you just really don't want to share that, but it's, it's such a huge, struggle you know so yeah I hope that that people realize that there's definitely a lot of people in the same boat yeah and it does take some some I guess bravery to share that because it's not it's not the Instagram ready conversation that we tend to have or right. or whatever so it does um and I do think there is still some little bit of a taboo in that because, and, and I think that comes from the cowboy culture as well as the social media culture of everything has to look sunshine and roses yes. all the time. And it's not. No, <laughs> most definitely not. It's like normally like your Instagram, your Instagram post that like five seconds that life looks good. That's the only five seconds all day. It looks that good. So yeah, the the whole process is, is up and down for everybody so and it may have taken all day to get those five seconds <laughs> <laughs> right yes. of looking Absolutely. good <laughs> yes. yeah. for sure well i want to thank you for coming on today um if people want to kind of get in touch with you or um follow you kind of where can they what, what's your what's your social media handles <laughs> well we have our business page is t4 quarter horses um and then I breland's phone cut out right there at the end she can be reached on her family's business page at t4 quarter horses or you can connect directly with her at breland cowan either on facebook or instagram she'd be happy to connect with you Breland with a breath of fresh air, and I'm very glad to have had her as a guest for my In the Arena 365 segments. I'm really excited about these segments for the Writer's Edge podcast as it um, just gives a fresh perspective on real life because we live real life in the process, in the process of working towards our goals. If you guys need any help with anything that's going on in your arena, as far as uh, riding performance, horse performance, please feel free to reach out to me. You can connect with me at ridersedgetherapy.com or look me up on Facebook at Riders Edge Therapy and Wellness or Instagram as well. Thank you guys for tuning in as always, and I will see you down the road. Thank you for listening to Rider's Edge Podcast. For show notes and other thoughts, head over to ridersedgetherapy.com. If you would like to stay connected and continue the conversation, head over to my free Facebook group, Rider's Edge Health and Wellness for Horse and Rider. Thanks for continuing the conversation, and as always,